the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 340 Acts chapter 20 verse 7 to chapter 23 Paul's fifth Sanhedrin assembly trial Although Paul's fellow workers dissuaded Paul from going to Jerusalem, he boldly moved toward Jerusalem for the greater will of God. First point. On his way to Jerusalem, Paul in Miletus sent for the elders in Ephesus in order to say farewell. Paul's journey to Jerusalem began in AD 57 in Ephesus, where he had previously spent three years during his third missionary journey. However, Paul's plans to go to Rome were disrupted by the Jews, which meant that Paul had to take the long route to avoid them. Paul's journey to Jerusalem was as follows. Ephesus, Corinth, where he wrote Romans, Philippi, Troas, Azos, Mytilin, Chios, Samos, Miletus, Kos, Rhodes, Patara, Tyre, Ptolemais, Caesarea, and Jerusalem. Although Paul had plans to go to Syria from Corinth by sea due to the assassins who so desperately wished to kill Paul, Paul had to travel by land by passing through Corinth to Philippi and then to Troas. When Paul and his team arrived in Troas, despite never having taught the gospel there, they found that there were many believers of Jesus. Although Paul had to leave Troas the next day, he spent the night there and kept communion with them whilst spreading the gospel further. Paul personally taught the gospel all night until the morning. However, it was here that the Eutychus incident occurred. After this, Paul left Troas and then passed through Assos, Mytilene, Chios, Samos, and then arrived in Miletus. Although Paul wanted to visit Ephesus, which was not too far from where he was, he decided to send a person there instead as he wished to go to Jerusalem by Pentecost. Here Paul gave the final sermon to them. He furthermore wished for them to live in the truth of the gospel. Paul moreover blessed the elders and asked them to live by serving and looking after the weak in the church. When it was time for Paul to leave, the church members all embraced Paul and cried, especially as they knew they could not meet Paul again, despite knowing that there were people that wanted to carry him on his journey, Paul still decided to leave, and the people also knew this, but had to see Paul leave. Second point, Paul met Philip in Caesarea, whom he almost killed 20 years ago, and stayed at his house. After parting with the elders of Ephesus, Paul finally reached Caesarea. Here, Paul went to the house of Philip and stayed there for a while. Philip was one of the workers who were chosen alongside Stephen and when persecution broke out against the Christians, Philip went to Samaria to spread the gospel. After that, Philip came to Caesarea where he settled. Twenty years ago, Paul and Philip could not imagine being friends. Twenty years later, the gospel brought them together, and Paul now sat as Philip's guest. The two came to realize that this was all a part of God's plan. During the time Paul was staying in Philip's house, Agabus came and made a prediction. Agabus worked in Jerusalem for a long time as a prophet, and had predicted the great famine a while ago. Despite Agabus's prediction, Paul had no intentions of changing his route. Paul knew full well that if he left for Jerusalem, he had a high chance of being killed, and ultimately, this would mean that he would not be able to go to Rome. 
Nevertheless, Paul still wished to go to Jerusalem, as this was God's mission given to him. What Paul sincerely wished to do was to visit Jerusalem one last time, pass on the funds to them, and then leave for Rome. Third point, after delivering the aid and his missionary report to the Jerusalem church, Paul was arrested by the Jews in the temple. Paul finally came to Jerusalem church and reported back his previous steps. Firstly, Paul reaccounted what had happened in Corinth, Ephesus, Philippi, and so on. Secondly, Paul delivered the funds that he had collected from Macedonia and other places in a constant right way, and so enabled the churches to have a good relationship. When the Jerusalem church heard of Paul's report, they were grateful, but they were also worried for Paul's safety. This was because at the time, there were so many Jews converted to Christians who were also strictly law-based. As Paul spread and taught about the gospel of Jesus Christ, news had spread that Paul was against the law. In order to solve this, the Jerusalem church came up with an idea to convince the Jews. Paul respected and agreed with this decision and decided to go forth with it. However, it so happened that some Jews who came to Jerusalem to keep Pentecost spotted Paul there. They saw Paul carrying out a ceremony with full diaspora Jews, and this led to a misunderstanding. It appeared as though Paul was blaspheming the temple. Consequently, a riot broke out, and the Jews dragged Paul out. The Jews then tried to kill Paul outside the temple. Thankfully, a Roman centurion was there, and Paul was able to save his life. The centurion asked why the Jews were trying to kill Paul. Here, Paul spoke to the centurion in Greek, which startled him. Fourth point, the command of the Roman Empire opened up the fifth Sanhedrin assembly for Paul, who was a Roman citizen. Paul asked for an opportunity to defend himself in front of his people. In order to persuade the Jews, he spoke Hebrew. Paul revealed that he received Jewish education growing up. He clearly stated that he was a man of God. He declared that in the past he was similar to them now. Although Paul honestly tried to persuade them, the Jews still tried to kill Paul. When the commander found that an even bigger riot was about to happen, he took Paul to be slashed. At that moment, Paul revealed that he was a Roman citizen. When the commander heard this, he feared enormously. According to Roman law, if a Roman citizen had been slashed or tied up without proper legal procedures, then this put the commander's job at stake. Therefore, the commander opened up the fifth Sanhedrin assembly for Roman citizen Paul. Thus, 20 years after Stephen's matter, the fifth Sanhedrin assembly was launched. Luke in Acts carefully recorded its content. During his trial, Paul made a big statement, which ultimately split the Pharisees and Sadducees. This opened up a fight, meaning that they did not have time to fight with Paul. Because of this, the command had to take Paul to a place of safety. Fifth point, after the fifth Sanhedrin assembly, the commander put together 470 Roman soldiers in order to take Paul to Caesarea safely. When the massive riot broke out during the fifth Sanhedrin assembly, the trial came to an unfinished close. The Jews who wished to kill Paul woke up the next morning and once again decided to kill Paul. Paul was informed of their plans. Therefore, Paul was ultimately moved to Caesarea by the command and was handed over to the governor Felix. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondoc app. The Tondoc app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. 
Dr. Biongo Zhou has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zhou is a sought after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondoc app.